So we're going to make some swifts out of willow. Um, uh, this is the willow that we're going to be using. Now I've used this willow for quite a few years and I use it for lantern making. And this is called buff willow or lantern willow. And it's been soaked in a bath overnight and it's perfect for making very nice hoops and curves and shapes. Uh, you can use living willow but this has been this has had its uh, bark steamed off which makes it makes it really smooth and it's perfect for making shapes. What we're going to do is by making something essentially out of a series of hoops and things like that. And what I'm going to do a good place to start is by making hoop. We're going to stick these together with masking tape and we've got lots of masking tape lined up ready. So I'm free our hands up for this. Quite bendy. It's one of the mistakes that people often make is trying to get a, get a circle or a hoop that, that way. And what I find is that the willow has kind of like a natural tendency to spiral and then like that. And then even though this is quite a long length of willow, it's good. So we can make a, a hoop that size. And then we'll uh, fasten that together. And there's just a little um, handy tips that are quite good, like really putting the masking tape on to start at one end there and then wrap it round nice and tight. What we're going to need to do is take this in about four five places and what it is is like tuck the, the willow in there and this bit here. It's good, it's good to not have any uh, protruding bits of willow and you can tuck it inside but we don't need to cut it really. That in like that. and there we have our first hoop. Okay, once we've got our ring, we need to think about how big the body is. So, this is quite a large uh, hoop for the size of a swift's body. We've got to think about the proportion of things. And we'll need to make uh, several hoops. As you can see in this one here, we've got three different sizes. Once we've got a few hoops together, We'll start putting the shape of the bird. And if we get some willow like this, we'll twist around. And now, as you can see, and as we do a little bit of spray, it gives a really nice shape for a Swiss body. And then we start attaching the pieces like that. And we might need slightly longer lengths of tape. And essentially, we're kind of binding it around, crossing over. I always find it's good to go both ways. So it's a keeps it level. Just to be sure to, to press it down, pack it down nice and tight and then work the way around. And then we'll carry on like that and then we'll insert circles. So, a shame. so here we are, we're starting to have something that resembles the Swift's body. Now it's quite good to have uh, some lengths of willow that come around like that and then we can use that for the tail. Come like that. And like I say, like the willows really supple so that will bend. And if you need to just pull it in a little bit, and then we would attach that to there. And then take that up, and then we just have our tail. Here we are. And what this uh, body needs now is a beak. So I'm going to take a piece of willow and basically just sort of bend it around there, spraying it and then feed it through and then work out how long the beak is, how far out it needs to go. Think about that and then we'll tape that in place. The beak coming out through there and uh, the rod going straight through. So then we need to make sure that the yeah, that's the right way. I'm going to insert, I've got some um, plastic plumbing tube here, it's uh, 22 millimeter. So we're going to cut that to length there and that's going to fit that way, like there. And that's going to be really good so that we can insert a piece of garden cane and uh, good for carrying it. But what we need to do first is um, seal off the end. So the easiest way to do that is just with a bit of insulation tape. Okay, like that. 
cut tough at one end. It's just important to remember which way to go, because if you put it that way, you're going to have to bird some across like that. And then, kind of roughly in the middle, so it's got a bit of balance to it. And then we should be able to find three points where we can attach it to. And I do sort of um, electrical tape for that, and sledge tape. Make sure that the bottom's open there and leave that free so that it can fly a bit. Now we're going to um, fit the wings. So I would do this. this way. The point thing about adding wings and things like that is not to try and do a, an attachment there because that would be too weak. So it's good to feed the, the willow right through. Have some overlay there. Just thread it through. I'll stop it from escaping and then we can tape that bit down. I find it's always good to uh, tape in three places, two or three places like that. And so we can use this central rod. Kind of good to cross reference for proportions. The Swifts have got uh, incredibly long wings for the size of the body. So that's to get it um, spot on straight away. So if I attach those, I think there, we can adjust it later, or we can. Uh, if I sort of decide that it's too short or too long, we can add or shorten it like that. Now that's quite a, a feeble structure, so what we're looking at doing is reinforcing that with some uh, a couple of hoops or just like that. So we don't have to worry too much about what the wing actually looks like from the outside, it's just making it a, a, a solid, a, a good structure. I'll show you this one. Stage further, and you can see that somebody's putting a hoop there, and then maybe another piece there to sort of brace it. So you can see that's a lot sturdier. You could add more, but I think um, that's going to be okay. Check all the joints are nice and tight like that, and then that is ready for the next stage, which is papering. The papering is really nice and fun. We usually spend quite a lot of time constructing the frame, but this is where it gets a little bit quicker. Some uh, PVA and water mix. So, uh, probably more water than PVA. Sintel uh, is the right consistency. Okay, this area. This is uh, wet strength tissue paper. So, I got this from the place we get the willow from. This is great stuff, this is strong, not like your regular tissue paper. It is really easy to tear one way, but not the other way. So if you want smaller pieces, uh, just get a pair of scissors on it. Then we do the paper in, we put it on the mat there. And use a brush or a sponge. The sponge is really quick. start with it might just be sucking round like that and then 
and work around, cover it in, it's all bad. You can do full, full size sheets. Kind of good to just keep your finger on one corner of the uh, tissue paper to stop it from dragging away. mixed up some paint, it could be any, any water based paint really, I've used um, some acrylics but you might want to use some house paint to mix it up. And then we're just going to give it all a, a complete coat like this first. And with it being water based like acrylic it will dry really quickly and then you can do some uh, tonal shades on it as well. Once that's dry then we can sort of like define the, uh, the feathers and the eyes with the lighter colours. And it can be as detailed or not as you wish. Okay, to finish off um, is to get the pole in. You can use uh, garden caves. The best thing I've found so far is an abandoned fishing rod. So if you come across any of these, these are great. Might need to pack it up with a little bit of tape there. Not fitting there. Push there. And away we go. 